Hey there, Alex Kidman from Alex Reviews Tech here. But before I start this review, a couple of quick things to line up. First and foremost, the Elegoo Centauri Carbon I'm reviewing here was sent to me by Elegoo. I think this kind of upfront disclosure is really, really important. I did not spend my own money on the printer and they've indicated they're not going to ask for it back. They just wanted a YouTube review, which is what you're watching. But again, I think disclosure is super important. Secondly, I'm not pretending here to be an expert on 3D printing. Far, far from it. I am coming to it from a novice's point of view, from a relatively new user. I'm not a complete novice, to be clear. I have reviewed 3D printers in the past, but I kind of stepped away from that field because an awful lot of it was stepping towards resin-based printing. And for fume and breathing and chemical-related reasons, I can't do resin printers. I just cannot. Initially, to be totally transparent, Elegoo actually approached me and said, hey, would you like to review a resin printer? And I said, no, I can't do that because I can't. And they suggested the Centauri Carbon, obviously an existing model instead. So that's why I'm reviewing this, but I'm very much reviewing it from the perspective of someone picking up a lower cost, maybe first 3D printer, where it's good, where I think it's bad, where I think there are some issues. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the review. Elegoo's claim for the Centauri Carbon is that it's ready to print right out of the box. And given the strong DIY ethic present in a lot of 3D printing systems, let's just say I had my doubts about that. The reality is it's not quite a matter of just unpacking it and printing your first model within minutes. There's a process that involves installing the front display, popping on the filament spool holder, and removing some holding screws, plus a quantity of polystyrene that has to be sensibly recycled. Still, on the setup side, it's fairly easy. The documentation could be a little bit better, but there are some pretty good videos on the included USB drive, so I'd suggest you use those when you're setting it up. The Centauri Carbon printer is an entirely enclosed model built around a metal and glass frame. It looks really impressive, but it also takes up a fair amount of space, measuring in at 398 by 404 by 490 millimeters. So it needs some space wherever you're going to put it. Although that does allow for build volumes of up to 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters in your filament type of choice. For what it's worth, during this review, I've printed purely in simple PLA, but it'll take a whole bunch, a whole Scrabble set's worth of filaments. You can look up the specifications if you wish, but it will do quite a lot for a printer at this price point. Some of that stuff is, I'll be honest, beyond my skill set, which is why I've basically printed it in PLA. Now, while it's a fully enclosed unit, which it needs for certain filament types, the top glass cover and the front door can be opened for improved venting, depending on again, the material you're printing with. I've been using PLA where it is recommended that you do allow for some venting. That's easily enough managed just by popping up the top plate. Speaking of plates, Elgo provides a dual-sided smooth rough plate for varying filament types. I've mostly printed on the rough side of the plate. It's quite easy to flip over, but I've mostly printed there. That's basically based on some of my prior 3D printer tests on different machines, to be fair, where I've had some real adhesion disasters with other printers. Now, if I'm missing a trick on that smooth plate, if there's something I don't know, because as I say, I'm not pretending I'm an expert here, please let me know in the comments below. One thing that pleasantly surprised me, for my initial setup of the printer, basically, so I take some photos so I can do its initial setup, I dropped it just onto a really cheap, simple, quite flimsy IKEA lac table. If you've ever had one of those, you know how basically flimsy and cheap they are. And I didn't really intend to keep it there, but I thought, well, I may as well put this thing through a bit of a torture test. So I did a sample print and to my great surprise, it worked and it continued working. Now, I'm not advocating for this. I think if you've got this long term, yeah, put it on somewhere a lot more stable. You're giving yourself a lot better chances of getting prints. But I was genuinely surprised at how well this could print on something that was itself shaking because of the motion of the printer. Usually that would just be a disaster area. And here it absolutely was not. Loading filament into the Centauri Carbon is okay. It's handled from a side-mounted filament spool reel, and it can be a little tricky, largely because when you're first doing so, there's not a lot of feedback to let you know that you've done it exactly the right way. You will, of course, find out when it prints or fails to print when you try, but some better level of indication that you're doing the right thing wouldn't really go astray here. The Centauri Carbon is a Corex Y 3D printer. I'm not going to go into the mechanics of how those systems work, but in theory, they allow for faster and more precise prints. Now, it does assume some level of 3D printing knowledge using Elegoo's 
Elegoo Slice app. This is based around the open source Orca Slicer, if you're familiar with that. Again, there are some pretty good tutorials out there to get you started. And for a lot of people in the novice space, I suspect they're just going to grab models and try to print them. And this is not a terrible approach, honestly, in my view, because you can kind of learn by what works and what doesn't, to a degree anyway. The Centauri Carbon supports printing either through a USB drive and good old fashioned sneaking at action or over Wi-Fi. And here the setup is decidedly old school because getting Wi-Fi access involves adding the Elegoo Centauri Carbon via its IP address. You actually have to thump that into either the Elegoo Slicer app or you can actually drop it into a web browser if you just want monitoring of the printer in real time. And for entry-level users, yeah, look, I can see how that might be a little bit challenging. It's certainly not impossible to do, of course. But it's one of those things that maybe could be a little bit simpler if it was findable as a printer or if the Slicer app had the intelligence to find nearby Elegoo devices. But that's not what they've done. The Centauri Carbon also has an integrated camera. And that allows you to see if a print is actually progressing properly, either via the app or via a web browser. But also, it allows you to record time lapses of your prints, although this has some challenges to it. The interior of the carbon's chamber is quite dim, and many time lapses will come across with a pretty poor level of detail if you just choose to record straight away. Now, there is an internal light, which improves matters a lot, but for whatever stupid reason, it's not automatically selected when you opt to record a time lapse. Instead, you have to manually switch it on, and you can't switch it on if there's already a print in progress. I have no idea why. I went through a number of time lapses before I figured that out, which is why some of these time lapses that you're seeing are so dark. But even with the light enabled, it's not superb. If you are keen on capturing this kind of time lapse stuff, I would suggest having a few lights handy would be a very, very smart play. In terms of print quality and speed, I've generally been very happy. For a variety of printed models and small devices that I've tested with so far, I'll show these off now. But generally, I've been happy with the quality of most of the prints that I've made. There have been some small issues with cleaning up supports, sometimes with a little bit of stringing of filament, but nothing that's truly ruined a model for me as yet. As always, and especially at the starter level, there are some challenges working out whether a print is working or failing based on as much the model and the support structures and such, or whether it's the printer at fault. And so far, I've hit only one absolutely failed print on the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, which, like most other 3D printers, will happily keep flinging out filament even when it's gone wrong. But I can attribute that to the way I stacked multiple models combined with the print speed I chose. It wouldn't be fair to say that this was 100% the carbon's fault in that case. What I will blame the Centauri Carbon for is being noisy. It's loud. And it's not helped, of course, by the fact that the enclosure itself obviously acts as an effective echo chamber for its noise. In my smaller home office, the noise of it printing and its fans is entirely noticeable, quite loud, which has generally led to me printing most objects outside of my office hours to avoid the din. And let's be clear here, it's not deafening, I'm not complaining that way, but compared to some more open models I've tested in the past, it's definitely on the louder side. Something to be aware of if you're printing in a smaller space or other people have to put up with the noise of a 3D printer running. So should you buy the Elegoo Centauri Carbon? Well, look, if you're already well-versed in the 3D printer space, you're probably very well aware of this particular printer. It seems to have been around for a little while and have had plenty of other reviews. I probably don't need to tell you whether or not you want it. If you're more of a novice to the 3D printing space, this would not be a bad place to start. Given its moderate asking price for its feature set, its speed, and the quality of its prints, it's a reasonable starting position. There is still a learning curve here, of course, and the noise of the printer is quite noticeable, actually. It's easily the thing I like the least about the Centauri Carbon is the fact that it is loud by 3D printer standards, but... If you can avoid the noise by simply not being in the room while it's printing, 
or if you've got a decent set of active noise cancelling headphones handy, which I do, then yeah, this comes at recommended. Thanks for watching the review. Please leave me any feedback. As I say, I'm not presenting this as a full-on expert review, so if you've got tips or tricks or if there are things you think that I've missed that the carbon does or doesn't do, leave them in the comments below.